All right, so what I have now is just a comparison slide that uh, shows uh, the time complexity of each of the three shortest path algorithms and what kind of edge weights they can work with, what kind of uh, direction, whether they can work with undirected or directed graph and so on. Uh, so um, we looked at three shortest path algorithms, Dijkstra, Bellman, Ford and Floyd, Warshall. Now, Dijkstra and Bellman for a single source shortest path because um, you really start from a starting vertex and then and find out the shortest path from that vertex to every other vertex. Okay, so that's why it's called single source from one particular vertex to every other vertex. Now, Floyd Warshall is a all pass shortest path. That means uh, you can, after you run the algorithm, you're able, you'll be able to find the shortest path from one vertex from any vertex to any other vertex, so it's all paths. Now, what kind of graphs we'll typically use? Now, of course, as I said earlier, we can apply Dijkstra for both undirected and directed, similarly Bellman Ford for direct and directed also. But typically, uh, we will use Dijkstra for undirected graphs and Bellman Ford for directed graphs. And Floyd Warshall it can be applied for both. Uh, again, if you want all paths shortest path, of course we will. After this discussion, we will explore. Uh, if you want all paths shortest path, is it better to use Floyd Warshall or run Bellman Ford or Dijkstra algorithm? We'll look at that. But for now, Floyd Warshall can be used for both undirected and directed graph graphs. Now edge weights. Now, uh, Dijkstra, you can use only if the edge weights are positive. Uh, and whereas Bellman Ford you can, and Floyd Warshall, you can use for both positive and negative edge weights. Now, time complexity uh, among the between the two single source shortest path algorithms, Dijkstra is efficient because it's e times log v time complexity, whereas Bellman Ford is e times v. Uh, of course, you saw an optimization that is possible with Bellman Ford. Um, that can make it a little less time uh, consuming, but it's still E times V at the worst case. Now, Floyd Warshall, uh, as you just saw, it's V cube time complexity. Okay, so now uh, let me just uh, pull out two cases. Um, I did not have a slide, but I'll add that slide after uh, the uh, class today. Now, uh, there could be a scenario uh, where we have to really explore whether to use. Um, uh, Floyd Warshall to find all paths shortest path or say Dijkstra's algorithm. Now you may wonder Dijkstra is single source shortest path, how can it be used for all paths shortest path? But think about this, uh, by running Dijkstra's algorithm once on a graph from a particular starting vertex which is the source, you are able to find the shortest path from that source to everyone else. So that means we can run the access algorithm starting from every vertex in the graph. So if you do that, uh, after running the access algorithm on all the say uh, v vertices in the graph, we are going to have the shortest path from each of those vertices to every other vertex, right? So one run of the access algorithm. So like in the examples that we just went through earlier in this uh, module. Um, So I ran the access algorithm once on this graph, starting from A, ended up with this shortest path tree. Now I could run the access algorithm now starting from B, then I'll end up with the shortest path tree starting from B to everybody else. Then I run the access algorithm say starting from C, I'll be able to find the shortest path from C to everyone else. So you could run the access algorithm basically six times on this graph, once from each different vertex then you'll be able to find the shortest path trees from each vertex to every other vertex after run all the six uh, uh, instances of the access algorithm. So that means if you have a graph of V vertices, running the access algorithm V times will give you the all pass shortest path. Okay. Now what will be the time complexity of doing that? So let us go to the final slide. So the time complexity of doing that will be so if you run the access algorithm once on a particular starting from a particular vertex, it's going to be E times log V. If you run it V times, it's going to be E V log V. So the question is, we have to find out whether E V log V 
is better than VQ or not. Okay, so that's where we have to decide uh, or look at how, whether the graph that we are working with is what is called a sparse graph or a dense graph. Okay, so again, remember the expression what we have. It is E V log V, right? and v cube. So we have to decide whether E v log v is better than v cube or uh, better means is smaller than v cube or uh, greater than v cube. Okay. Now if, uh, if a graph is a dense graph, if a graph is a dense graph means you have basically uh, edges between most of the vertices, right? Then we can say the number of edges is proportional to square of the number of vertices. That means E is kind of V square. Okay, because you can also think about if you have V vertices, you are going to have V times V minus 1 over 2 possible edges, maximum number of edges between any, any all the V vertices. That's for a complete graph. So if the graph is a dense graph, you're going to have E equals V square. And what was the complexity we had? E V log V. So instead of E, put V square. It's going to be then V square times V times log V. That's going to be V cube log V. V cube log V is not greater, it's not less than V cube. V cube log V is greater than V cube. So that means if a graph is a dense graph, it's better to just use Floyd Warshall algorithm. Okay? Because if you use the access algorithm, you have to run it V times. And you're going to have a time complexity for a dense graph as V cube log V that's not going to be uh, smaller than V cube that you have for Floyd Warshall. On the other hand, if the graph is um, uh, what's called a sparse graph, a sparse graph means you don't have that many edges. You probably barely have edges that will keep the graph connected, means all the vertices are reachable, but you don't have that many edges in the graph. Then we can say E is proportional to V, which is the number of vertices. So again, the time complexity you will have for all pairs with the access E V log V, replace E with V then for a sparse graph. So V times V log V, that's going to be V square log V. And V square log V is going to be less than V cube. V square log V, we know from the first module on time complexity, uh, comparing the uh, polynomials, v square log v is less than v cube. So that means running Dijkstra's algorithm v times on a sparse graph to find all pairs shortest path is actually going to be more time efficient than running floyd Warshall algorithm. So that is something you have to realize. Uh, it's not that floyd Warshall is the only solution for all pairs. It, it depends on the graph. So if the graph is a sparse graph, you can run the access algorithm and that will be uh, uh, running on V times on the graph on same graph, once from each starting vertex. And it's going to give you the all pass shortest path in a lower time complexity. It's V square log V compared to Floyd Warshall V cube. Now with the same discussion you can do comparing Bellman Ford with Floyd Warshall. Uh, but you see, Bellman Ford is not going to be uh, doing better than Floyd Warshall because for a sparse graph, uh, again, you have to run Bellman Ford V times. So running it once is E V. If you run it V times, it's going to be E V square. Okay, so that's the time complex you're going to have for running Bellman Ford V times, E V square. So if it's a sparse graph, E is V. So that's going to be V times V square is still V cube. And same as Floyd Warshall. And if you run Bellman Ford for dense graph, is e times v square and e is also v square so it's v square times v square is v to the power 4 and v to the power 4 is going to be much larger than v cube for a very large graph so bellman ford is definitely not a, a candidate for running or for finding all paths shortest path in a dense graph if it's a sparse graph you could use bellman ford uh, it's also v cube time complexity as Floyd Warshall, but typically you'll go with Floyd Warshall instead of Bellman Ford. Um, because you can also, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, <coughs> uh, because uh, you can also have the dynamic programming approach where you can find solutions for all the sub problems by involving only some uh, set of intermediate vertices as possible intermediate vertices. You can also find what is the possible shortest path distances. You cannot do that with Bellman Ford. Okay, Bellman Ford is greedy, Floyd Washer is dynamic programming. 
so it's better to go for dynamic programming approach because you can have solutions for all the sub problems okay so it depends on the type of graph as well as uh, the, your choice of the algorithms okay so i'm going to add a slide after this uh, after the class but basically that's going to discuss what we just uh, what i just explained now okay all right so with that we finish this module uh, you can uh,